delighted to be here. Um, it was a little bit of a, of a surprise, I must say, and I, I hesitated to admit that this was my first time at the GSATC. I know I should have been here before, but uh, Phil, you're so entertaining that there's no question that I'm just going to have to come back. So I, um, I really thank you for, for coming today, and I hope I do justice to this topic. Um, but to get people to listen to you, or even to hear you, which is different, as any of you who have children know, but to get people to listen to you, you got to grab their attention. So that's what I'm going to try to do right now. And I'm going to play something twice, because it goes pretty quickly. And you have to look fast and listen closely. Domination is sweet. Wow. We're going to have a meltdown. The recipe for a different type of Booyah! Play it one more time. Try to catch it. I know it's a little fuzzy. 2035. Domination is sweet. Wow. We're going to have a meltdown. The recipe for a different type of Booyah! What you just saw is an introduction to a multiplayer game that calls for critical decision making, uh, teamwork, critical thinking, and strategy development. And it's set in the year 2035. The game is called Titan. And crushing the competition is to be encouraged. So set in the year of 2035, the players in this game produce holo generators that are small um, electronic devices that are designed to produce 3D holographic images from movies, phones, uh, the, the media, all that kind of thing. That's what their, what their um, charge is. And the players are to master six key business decisions. Their success is measured by a performance index that is based on the following. So the winner is the company with the highest performance indicator, performance index, pretty much like, uh, like real life. OK, so the build topic for this presentation is how can we create the entrepreneurs of tomorrow? But what do we mean by the term entrepreneur? What are the qualities of an entrepreneur? And what difference do, do they make? Um, the, Entre word entrepreneur comes from the French, which is entreprendre, which means to undertake. And this is the dictionary definition of the word, a person who organizes, operates, and assumes the risk for a business venture. But I wanted to make it a little bit closer to home. So I asked about um, uh, 12 entrepreneurs, six of whom responded to me, um, about what their definition was of an entrepreneur. One of them was Bo Autry, who's president of the commercial division of Windsor Autry. And this was his definition. He put a pretty personal spin on it. Can you all see this? Yeah. OK. Um, the, the key parts in this that I found interesting were his use of the word tenacity and the part that he says, you can't be discouraged but learns from failure. So he's trying to tell us that it's important that you be able to make mistakes. From Henry Horowitz, who's the owner of Oxford Capital Partners, he talked about the vision, drive, desire to be successful financially and obtain self-fulfillment. From John Warner, whom you know from Swamp Fox, his definition talked about creating value by solving problems that others have. And then he compares it with a local restaurant. He tries to make a distinction between a small business owner and an entrepreneur. 
Then we have Greg Pickett, who's the Interim Associate Dean at Clemson at the Falls that was just mentioned, and his is pretty academic. Applies value-added solution to customers' needs. And again, the word risk is contained in this one. From Frank Wingate, who's the Executive VP from Palmetto Bank, but he pointed out to me that he also has owned a trucking business and a real estate business. His version of it, again, talks about risk-taking, and talks about value. He also talks about the proper foundation that is needed to make those kind of decisions, which include the education, the experience, knowing when to make those mistakes, the integrity, and tenacity, again, is repeated by Frank. And then, of course, I had to have Phil represented here. And he put a very unique spin on it, which can only be Phil, as I understand him now and even compares it with the way an artist works with pastels or clay. So I liked his last sentence, which was different from anybody else, that the best entrepreneurs create automata, which is a different word than anybody else in the world uses, that generate that wealth using the barest minimum of moving parts and operator input. So this told me as much about Phil as it did about entrepreneurs. OK, so back to this um, Titan game that you were introduced to that might just have some of the background and some of the risk taking and some of the tenacity that we're talking about here. So who gets to play this game and where can you find it and when is it coming out? Well, it's high school students who get to play the game in their classroom and it's available from Junior Achievement. Titan was a game that was developed by Junior Achievement in order to help give students some of the necessary tools to make the critical economic decisions and managed decisions that are going to, that can make or break a business and that can also make or break any entrepreneurs and uh, make or break some of their lives or their livelihoods in the process. I don't know about you, but when I was in high school and would have heard the initials PI, I would have assumed it was from some television show where there was a private investigator. I do think that if I had had Titan when I was in school, I would have jumped to a whole nother level of sophistication. So let me tell you a little bit more about this competition that I mentioned up here. What it does is has about seven um, classes involved in it. And those critical decisions, those business decisions that we were talking about that were listed up there before, in each of those classes, a volunteer comes in and in the first class, they give them a couple of those decisions. Teach them about them, make them work with them, make sure they have the understanding. The next class, the next week, is a simulation which allows them to test how much they've learned in this kind of a video game kind of a scenario, which as you can imagine is appealing, a lot more appealing to those kids than just reading about it. The next session has another class that might be based, for example, on marketing and R&D. And then the next week, there's a simulation kind of game that they can test what it is that they've learned. The last lesson in those weeks is an actual competition among the students who are in that class. They form teams of two or three. So in this last class, they have a competition. And Junior Achievement of Upstate South Carolina is launching this competition in South Carolina for the first time. It's been in existence since 2004, but we haven't had it here in South Carolina. So we thought it was time, that it was the right thing to do for some of our high school students. The winners of the high schools are going to come together on April 2nd at Clemson at the Falls. Uh, Clemson, bless them, has partnered with us to put on this whole thing. They're going to have some of their MBA students involved as well as to lend us their facility and help us with the setup on this. So on April 2nd, we are having a regional competition for these winners of the high school students. We are getting this um, sponsored as much as we can so that we can offer scholarships to the winners of that group. So we feel not only will they learn an awful lot about business through this whole thing, but what we're hoping is that they will also understand the value of mentors and role models that surround them during this entire process, as well as the advantages of staying in school. Those scholarships will be uh, given to the students to the school that they're going to attend next. So that's what we're excited about. So that's about the competition. OK, so what is the connection now between junior achievement, and entrepreneurship. Historically, junior achievement started in 1919. Here's a little uh, advertisement, a little bit of history for you. It started in 1919 with Theodore Vail, who was the, uh, became the president of AT&T. And as now, it was intended at that time to make sure that youth knew more about business, 
that they were able to contribute to the business end of their society, the free enterprise uh, section of society um, at a future time. JA is worldwide, it's in 132 countries with nine million students, about half of those are in the US. In South Carolina, there are three of us, and we're in the upstate, in central, which is Columbia, and coastal, which is the Charleston area. We touch 15,000 students, and that's not enough. That's not anywhere near enough. Here in the upstate, we were established in 1972. We now cover five counties. Uh, last year, we touched 6,000 students. This year, we'd like to teach 7,500. Again, it's not enough, but we need volunteers to be able to teach um, all of those classes. So here's what JA is trying to do. We're trying to empower young people to own their future success. Not have it handed to them, not expect something else to happen, but to own their future success. And if we can do this, what we think we can do is to impact these areas of society, youth development, education development, and economic development. In youth development, these are the things coming to the outside that the JA programs try to promote. If you can see any of these, I think probably you'll agree that all of them would be helpful. In the area of economic development, these are the things that we work on. And in the area of education development, these are the things. Relevancy is, we think, important. If kids knew that what they were learning today, they were actually going to use in the future, maybe they would take more initiative and more interested in actually learning it. And if somebody, a volunteer, like any of you, come into their classroom, and suggest to them that you know that algebra that you're, you're looking at, that's what I use every day, or that writing that you're doing, maybe that would make more sense to them. So with these areas, they are interconnected. They are very much um, um, interdependent on one another in order to grow the economy, which is really what we're talking about here, too. That's where we think junior achievement comes in, because what we try to emphasize are workforce readiness, entrepreneurship, and financial literacy. And at the same time that we're trying to do those programs, these are the other things, the ethics and character um, that one gentleman mentioned a little bit ago, economics, business, and citizenship. Those are all some of the things that are connected with that. So how do we do that? We provide programs, kindergarten through 12th grade, um, that we go into the classrooms. There are 22 of them. They're all age-appropriate programs. And they focus on those three pillars that we just saw, the workforce readiness, the uh, financial literacy, and entrepreneurship. So in the elementary school, they talk about uh, the US economic system as it impacts, according to their grade level, when they are in kindergarten and they study ourselves, because we're very egocentric when we're in kindergarten, and we can branch out a little bit until by the time we're in fifth grade, we're up to looking at our nation and where that is. In the middle schools, they examine how businesses operate in the global economy. They explore career interests and opportunity. They have an op opportunity to have a job, theoretically, to figure out how much you should get paid for that job, to figure out how, what you should do with your other expenses. They, we also stress the importance of staying in school, especially in the middle school. By the time you get to high school, if they don't know it then, they're not going to learn it. So we try to make sure that in the middle school we stress that, and also the personal and societal impact of not completing high school. So that's part of our mission as well. And in the high school program, these are the names of the programs that we have. And you can, you can guess what they are. The Be Entrepreneurial is, is what we're talking about today. But business ethics is something that kids ought to know. The success skills that we're talking about, we actually interview the kids so that they understand, no, you can't come dressed like that. You have to be uh, appropriately attired. You have to look the person in the eye. The handshake is important. So these are some of the things that we teach them. Could they learn them elsewhere? I suppose. But these are proven programs. So why would teachers allow JA to come into the classroom? Do they not have enough to do? Part of this is because our programs, we've done our R&D on these. They are correlated to the national and the state standards of curriculum in social studies, math, and language arts. We don't ask the schools to fund this. We don't ask the teachers to teach these courses. We ask individuals, corporations, foundations to help us fund them. And we find the volunteers who can come into the classroom and teach them. We train those volunteers. We give them the materials to do that. Last year, we had 250 about volunteers teaching about 285 classes 
for the over uh, the 6,000 students. Um, and primarily in Title I schools, primarily in Greenville, but also in Spartanburg, and we're trying to have more of a presence in the other counties. Um, the program material that we get, that we give you is self-explanatory. We give you a little kit. Is that just adorable? And in this kit is everything you need for the entire course. Um, and our uh, wonderful program director, Linda Apple, is a great teacher and works with you on getting you comfortable. But there's a volunteer teacher uh, student guides in there that really tell you everything step by step. Now, when I asked the other, uh, the, those same entrepreneurs that we talked about before, I asked them one other question. And I said, what is it that is important to convey to middle and high school teachers about being entrepreneurial? So these are their, their answers from Bo. Again, he said, Tena tenacity wins the battles. From Henry, he is talking about the role of entrepreneurs, especially in the next five to 10 years, that that may be the desired venue in order to succeed both financially and professionally, and he might have added personally. For Greg Pickett, he almost echoes the same thing. They work for themselves, they create jobs for others. What a perfect combination. From John Warner, follow your passion. And this obviously reads well with kids because that's what they know the most about. And as many people have told me, if you are not in a job where you can follow your passion, uh, that is probably not gonna be a job that you're gonna stay with or be happy in. From Frank Wingate, the confidence factor. What he would like to tell middle school and high school students is that they can be what they want to be if they have the confidence to go ahead with it. So that's important. And from Phil, he has, as usual, a slightly different take. For Phil, it's all about the stuff. <laughs> but what he says, as you can imagine, may resonate very closely with middle and high school students. So how do we actually teach entrepreneurship in such a way that it's, that it's realistic and it means something? Um, these are some of the qualities that we, that we look to, but how do our programs emphasize entrepreneurship and make an impact? And most importantly, do they actually produce any entrepreneurs or at least entrepreneurial thinking? We do conduct, conduct pre and post tests and they have the obvious conclusion that they've learned something in those courses. Okay, so that's great. But every year, JA does a survey by a third party, and they try to find out from JA alumni whether we've made any difference. It is problematic trying to do that survey, as you can imagine, because there are privacy issues with following, following kids. But this is what they found out when they asked them, how confident, are you confident enough to start your own business? 76% of the kids who had the JA courses said yes. 41% of the control group that did not have the JA courses said no. So this is going back to some of what our entrepreneurs have said, that confidence, the willingness to take a risk here, is a big factor. In terms of the kids' outlook, what is it that they think is valuable about entrepreneurs? And you might think, especially maybe if you have kids, uh, at that particular age. You might think that it's the riches and the fame and the glitz and the glamour and the flamboyant personality. This was a survey taken, again, among kids who had had JA programs. And their conclusions were interesting. Their top three entrepreneurs, I don't know whether you can see it up there, were Steve Jobs, author J.K. Rowling, and media mogul Oprah Winfrey. And what they felt was valuable were those things on the left, the intellectual accomplishment, the strong work ethic, and the strong business skills. They knew that those were qualities that these people had that they so admired. And what did they think was the best thing about being an entrepreneur? They cited two things above all. One was the freedom to be self-directed, and the other was the opportunity to do good, which I think some of us found very interesting, because all three of these people have done something pretty significant with their wealth. Now I will tell you that um, one, two, three, four is somebody I've never heard of. It's a J, J, T, J, I, he's a rapper. So they are in there. 
Um, but I didn't want to ignore that, um, but that is there. And when they surveyed them and asked how many wanted to be entrepreneurs, it was a pretty impressive 51%. So those of you who think entrepreneurship is a good thing, there is, there is hope. So back to the earlier question, so what? What does it matter at all whether or not we are grooming the next generation to be entrepreneurs? I think I'm speaking to the choir here in terms of, yes, it matters. And why does it matter? I said that. Okay. Small businesses, many of which are entrepreneurial, comprise 99.7% of all employer firms. They employ 50% of all private sector employees. This, this statistic I found interesting, that they were the ones who created 65% of net new jobs for the last 17 years. And in the words of, just repeating some of Greg Pickett's words, this, I think, is why they matter. The, and what Junior Achievement feels is that entrepreneurship is such an integral and significant part of making the economy grow. And if that's the case, then JA needs to put entrepreneurship into its programs and make sure it's there. Um, are, are all of the students that we teach and reach going to be entrepreneurs? No, and that's fine. But our goal is to give them some of the tools that they need to make them successful in whatever field they choose. Again, that's our mission, is to empower young people to own their future success. Okay, back to the game for a second. You were afraid I wasn't going to get back there, but I'm back there. I, you, I, I know that you're, you're uh, forgive me, but you're too old um, to have any JA programs with the Titan program in your, uh, in your high school. But I have a virtual door prize for you. And if you want to make a holo generator, go to this website and you can play a practice game. You can play it with other people, but you will have a good time with this game. I was intrigued enough with it um, to, to certainly to try it. Obviously, that's part of my, uh, my uh, uh, job is to try these things out, but it's very interesting. And I'm going to um, end here with just two pitches. One is that you are all, um, oh, you know what I forgot? I think I forgot something. Did I forget something? Yes, I did. I want, no, I didn't. Sorry, let me go back. Uh, two pitches. One is that you are all invited to a gala, gala auction and reception on November 18th. It's a Thursday at the Carolina First Center. We are a 501c3. Like any 501c3, we have to figure out a way to um, raise money. So you are all invited to that. It's going to have a good time. Stuart Spinks is our Spirit of Achievement Award winner at that time. We, um, and we just, just have a lot of fun. Um, and two, um, although it is too late for you to experience the JA programs, it's not too late for you to help develop the next generation of entrepreneurs by volunteering in the JA classroom. And it is uh, one time a week for five to seven weeks. The classes are 35 to 45 minutes each. You can choose the grade level and you can choose the school. So what I wanted to say to you is that if you want to make a difference, and use your work experience at the same time, then I urge you to help out and step up and volunteer for JA. I would be happy to take your business cards. You give them to me and we'll call you if you'd like to help in any way. 
Um, I thank you very much, and I'm, um, if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer them or turn it over to Phil, whichever you'd prefer.